now that we're in part two, I get to show you guys how to make the um, circle in the middle with the audio spectrum going around it to kind of pump up and down to um, get some of the more bass effect, make it look a little better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. What we're going to do is in order to make it so that the background doesn't um, pump with it, so we're actually going to select the background and delete it. There we go. And I just have a green background that won't show up. In the end, and then what we're going to do is we are going to pre-compose these by selecting them all and right-clicking. Pre-compose. And we're just going to name this main effect. There we go. And then we're going to go back into our project and select the background, which I believe is this. And then we're going to put that underneath like that. So it doesn't look almost any different, except for the fact that it is actually beneath a whole other layer, which is the main effect. So now we're able to double click on the main effect, and it'll open it up like this. And that is perfect. That is, ex that is exactly what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the audio, in our case, which is the um, frag out drop, the um, base drop of frag out. We will select it, go up here into um, animation, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. That may take a second considering how long your clip is, but mine only being 20 seconds is pretty easy. Then you'll have this new thing called audio amplitude. We're going to go ahead and put that below the audio. Now in the audio, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, well actually we're not actually going to do it in the audio, we're actually going to go ahead and put that back up. Never mind, we're going to go ahead and right click, new, solid layer. Nope, sorry, new effect layer. Adjustment layer, there we go. New adjustment layer. In that, we're going to go into effects over here, oops. We're going to effects, and we're going to search Magnify right here in Distort. Now we're going to bring the size all the way up so that it fits over the whole thing. We're going to bring it up to like a thousand or so. And then we're going to bring the magnification down all the way to a hundred. So it's back to normal. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the magnification, magnification hold Alt, and then press the little stopwatch. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to go search up blur. So we're going to add a blur effect. We'll go with fast blur because that's the easiest to work with. Put that right there. Let it load. And we're going to hold alt. Well, we're going to check this to make sure you don't rep you repeat the edges. And then you want to hold alt and select the um, stopwatch for blurriness. And then lastly, you're going to want to go to, you know what, we're going to keep it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the audio amplitude right here. Press the down arrow. And we're going to go into effects. We're going to select the left channel, delete it. Select the right channel and delete that. And then we're going to go into both channels section. Now we're going to go in here. Press delete, all, delete all that text. Press a little curly thing here. That's called a pick whip. And pick whip down to um, the slider right there in the both channels section. And then before that, we're going to select right there. And we're going to do 100 plus all that. And then we're going to go, whoa, where'd it go? I've never seen that happen. But you know what? We're going to roll with it because it looks like it worked. <laughs> I don't know why it just left. But anyway. Then we go down here, select all that, delete it. And then we're gonna do a little pick whip thing down to the slider. And then on this, we're going to do forward slash two, which is going to divide the whole thing by two. And then that will allow it to, if I play with the space button, it'll grow as the bass happens. It's a little laggy. 
We'll go and load it up real quick though, because if you load it, it works better once you actually watch it. There we go, now we can see it again a little bit smoother. Okay, and now what you can do to kind of make it look more defined and more, um, like there's little um, areas where it's not moving as much. What you're gonna do is you can go back into the um, audio amplitude. You're gonna select this little time top uh, stopwatch while holding Alt. And I'll bring up this, and we're going to leave that affect both channels thing, and we're gonna add before it linear. And then parentheses, and then comma, 25, 50, 0, 50. And then a parentheses. And that should have more zero sections. Now that did work, but it took out a little bit too much, which means we might not want to bring we might want to bring this 25 down a little bit lower to more like 10, which you guys may want to do too. Or you might want to bring it higher depending on what your music is like. Saga! I'll load the front a little bit too. Awesome. And we'll go ahead and play it from the beginning, see what it looks like. That looks awesome. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add it to the render queue. Here, I'm going to go ahead and pause it. You're going to add it. I'll go up here into composition. Add to render queue. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to render it. Hit render. And it's going to take a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut through this. And I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, guys. Mine just finished rendering. And it actually turned out. That I um, rendered it wrong because I rendered it with the green background. What you want to want to do is you're going to want to go back to your original file that has the background in it, like this, and it should still be working. There we go. See how it's not zooming in on the background? It's only doing it with that. That allows you to have any background you want and not have it affected by the zoom. Now I don't have enough time to show you guys um what the end result looks like, but I will go ahead and show you what you're going to do is you're going to go to composition, add a render queue, and then you would just render it right there. But I'm not going to do that because I don't have the time to do it right now. So um, I hope you guys um, have this be useful and maybe you guys will be able to use it sometime in one of your guys' videos. But anyway, I'm going to end this here and maybe I'll show you guys a little bit more what you can do with After Effects later. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, see you guys in another After Effects episode if I make one. Bye.